Batman and Adam West was born this date, 1928. Batman and Robin. I used to love those fights. So I figured out the pattern that Batman and Robin would always lose the first fight and then win the second one. Then that kind of took a little bit of the specialness out of the episodes. I should turn your mic on, John. That theme song was written by Neil Hefty. Yes. I went to elementary school with his grandson, John Hefty. No way. Yeah. And I didn't believe it that, you know, because. Sure, why would you? And and sure enough, it, it turned out to be true. So it was. Michael, about that, Harvey? I'm just going to say Michael Keaton was the best Batman. Get the, I, I want to see that. I love me some Michael I Keaton. I want to see that Facebook comment section light up after that. There is controversial a, statement. A bar on the south side of Pittsburgh on Carson Street called Mario's. And one day when I was home from college, I was there with some friends of mine who were also home from college. We all kind of got together. And we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, my one friend looks over and he says, that's Michael Keaton, because Keaton's from Pittsburgh. I looked over, sure enough, it was Michael Keaton. This would have been back in like the mid-80s. So my uh, friend Bill, this is after Mr. Mom had been pretty famous. Mr. Uh, my friend Bill goes up to him, and he says to him, hey, 220, 221, right? I don't know if you remember that line from Mr. Mom. And Keaton looked up like, eh. <laughs> He wasn't as impressed by it. My friend Bill's sense of humor. Anyway, if you haven't seen Mr. Mom in a long time. <laughs> it's a joke. been a while. It's yeah. a joke from it. It's it. kind of. Yeah. It's a joke from it. Uh, let's welcome in our next guest, Steve Roberts. He is uh, president of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Steve, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Rob, thanks for having me. Uh, great, great of you guys to have me. And I quickly have to weigh in on the Batman subject. <laughs> All right. John, Matt. I was in the third and fourth grade when Adam West was Batman, and that was a not-to-be-missed show, yes. I can tell you that. Two nights a week. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it, it, it was something else. It's what the, all the kids talked about. All the kids wanted to play Batman and Robin. Who, who so, was your favorite was villain, Steve, on the on the villain scale? Who was your favorite villain uh, the, on that show? Probably the Penguin. I was, uh, for whatever reason, uh, I was somewhat taken with the Penguin. That was... Uh, uh, but uh, didn't he have like uh, the, always, the cane that the smoke came uh, out no, of? The gas, yeah, the, the, the gas, gas that put you to yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah. The, and he had a cackle. <laughs> yes, and a monocle. Penguin. Burgess uh -huh. Meredith. And a monocle. Yeah, Burgess yep. Meredith. Cesar Romero, I remember, as the Joker, and Frank Gorshin as the Riddler, but there was a bunch of others, too, who were kind of yep. in there. So, yeah, yep. they got some big names. That was a big thing to be a guest star on that show and be a villain. Uh, Colin, our Amazing. producer, tells me that Batman will be the first superhero to get a star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood September the 26th. Thank you, Colin. Wow. Yeah. Let's go, Batman. Good good to know. Good to know. The Fed cut interest rates by a half percent yesterday, surprising many. And the stock markets uh, this morning are up significantly. The NASDAQ is up two and a quarter percent. The S&P over one and a half percent down. Uh, stocks up over 1.3 percent this morning. Steve, I gotta believe, as the president of the Chamber of Commerce, you are a big fan of that half percent interest rate cut. Oh, you are exactly right. Of course, just as a reminder, this is the first interest rate cut since um, the pandemic. Um, it it has had a huge stimulative effect on the sort of macro economy. Uh, obviously, time will tell uh, what's actually going to happen. But um, it, it's uh, worth noting that uh, it's anticipated to have big income. Typically, interest rate cuts do stimulate the economy. Typically, they do lead to additional job creation. And uh, typically, they um, interest rate cuts encourage borrowing. So uh, some businesses, probably many would-be home buyers, have been holding off uh, waiting for rates to come down a little bit. Now they've come down even more than a little bit. And um, the Fed is signaling it will continue, that that uh, more rates could be um, called for going into 2025. And I think overall the business community probably thinks this is a very good thing. Yeah, the Fed signaled another half percent before the end of the year for a total of a 1% reduction. Wow. Uh, before the end of this year. Steve, give me the practical effect this will have on West Virginia businesses. I know you highlighted some of those uh, just a moment ago, but uh, what does this mean to the small business in West Virginia, which we all say is the backbone of the state's economy? Well, that's right. Um, West Virginia is largely a small business state. 
Um, so small businesses are very interest rate sensitive. Um, the banks have been very good to work with in West Virginia in terms of helping small businesses. We have award-winning banks in West Virginia for their uh, support for small business and their lending practices with small business. And um, interest rates can put small businesses out of business because often the margins in small business are very, very thin. So, um, you know, when they have to pay more for the money they need to borrow for uh, inventory or payroll or whatever it is they may be borrowing money for, if the cost of that borrowing goes up, it really has an impact on their ability to survive. Um, access to capital has long been identified as a as an issue for many small businesses in West Virginia. So lower rates help with all those things. And um, I would say West Virginia might be a disproportionate beneficiary of lower interest rates because so much of our uh, business backbone is small business. Mr. Gilstrap. We've had discussions today um in, in, in the studio about what kind of businesses are best to come to, in particular Jefferson County here, but not be that parochial. Um, West Virginians love their their um, farmlands and, and the beauty of the place and not so much industries. So going, what, what is the best kind of, what, what kind of industry does West Virginia need? Or what kind of business does West Virginia need to actually get that jump start on the growth that we need to kind of turn the corner and 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 start bringing people back in and, and start keeping young people here? John, I think that's a, a great question and a fantastic topic uh, for us to get on the table to discuss. And not to be uh, cheeky about the answer, but from a Chamber of Commerce point of view, we want them all to be welcome. Um, and um, and and we need businesses that are service providers. For just as one example, we need many more child care providers. Um, approximately 44 to 46 of our West Virginia counties have less than half the child care capacity that they need in their own community. So there would be a small business that we desperately need. But we um, we have communities in West Virginia that don't have even. Uh, small uh, locally owned uh, grocery stores as another example. But let me go to your, um, more directly to your point there. Um, we have long believed at the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce that West Virginia needs to identify uh, what we call uh, zones of prosperity. There are places in West Virginia that absolutely should be left pristine. Um, and there are places in West Virginia where We've had industry for over 100, in some cases, 150 years. So let's recycle some of the places that have had industry for 100 or 150 years. Um, those uh, We, um, uh, with the help of Brenda Nichols Harper, who worked here at the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce some years ago, we were able to pass a Brownfields law that says, Let's recycle some of the sites that have already been used. That's particularly important in the Ohio Valley. When you think of everything from, say, Weirton to Huntington, uh, there are lots of industrial sites there that can be picked up and reused. Some of that's going on with companies like Form Energy, but there are other opportunities out there for that. On the other hand, there are places um, – that um, where our, our real strength is our natural beauty, let's leave those places alone. And uh, we can do that if we just think ahead a little bit. Um, John, I also want to get, before I finish up uh, on answering that question, I want to get to the importance of the 21st century uh, jobs. West Virginia really needs to think about what are the 21st century jobs that can be grown here. We're making great strides in cybersecurity. I've been in meetings recently with the presidents of Marshall University and West Virginia University where cybersecurity, cybersecurity, cybersecurity has been discussed. Um, this is probably one of the big employment opportunities going into the future. We have to make sure that our that we're getting our young people educated in a way that prepares them for these 21st century jobs. In these areas where we're 
bringing trying to bring industry back into into the brownfields for lack of a better term do we do we have if we have the the physical infrastructure to rebuild the old the old factories that used to be there do we have the personnel to man it and how do we attract the personnel to come back so personnel is one of the biggest issues that we hear about um, the baby boomer generation is in the process of retiring. Uh, that that's sort of a, the biggest generation that we've had in West Virginia, or excuse me, in the United States. Um, West Virginia too, but throughout the United States, and and um, we need more employees. We need a way to get more people into the workforce. West Virginia is forty um, ninth uh, in the nation for workforce participation, and workforce participation measures people who are considered able to work and of working age, but not working. So we need to continue to focus on why are those people not in the workforce? Some of them are living in the wrong places. Some of them don't have um, the skills to do 21st century jobs. So let's help them get those skills. Let's help them uh, find a way to where those jobs exist and get them back into uh, the workforce. We have, um, according to state statistics, we may have as many as uh, between 50 and 60,000 job openings in West Virginia. So we have more uh, job openings in West Virginia than we have people um, on unemployment, as an example. Um, that that is something that needs um, deep exploration. But I think we would all agree we're exporting too many of our brightest and best, and um, we simply need to do a better job of showing them where the opportunities are in West Virginia. The, the opportunity may not be, uh, particularly if you're a student from a rural area, the opportunity might not be in your community, but it still might exist in West Virginia. It might exist in Martinsburg. It might exist in Morgantown. It might exist in Wheeling or Weirton or Parkersburg or um, Charleston or Bluefield or Beckley. So how do we help um, our people who would be interested in staying in West Virginia know about those opportunities. We are proposing to the West Virginia legislature the creation of a workforce czar. We do not have that position in West Virginia. Um, we spend millions and millions and millions of federal dollars on workforce, but we don't have any one person who um, directly reports to the governor, whose job is to talk about workforce, workforce, workforce. Where are the jobs? What skills are needed? And what can we do to get people into those jobs? Matt Harvey. Mr. Roberts, uh, I'm familiar that the, that the West Virginia Chamber recently held their annual business summit, and uh, I assume it was a great success. I'd like to hear your recap on that and, uh, and any of the big announcements that were held there. Well, Mr. Harvey, if you're going to call me uh, Mr. Roberts, I'm going to call you <laughs> Mr. Harvey, but it's great to hear your voice. I hope you're doing well. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, we did have the largest annual meeting in the 88-year history of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. We had nearly 1,400 people who came together. Um, we've always had this meeting in West Virginia since uh, only since 1948. We've had it every year at the Greenbrier. That's uh, the place that's big enough to hold this meeting and get everybody together under one roof. Um, it brings together all of the financial, education, political, and industrial leadership of West Virginia for three days of thinking ahead, hearing from stimulating speakers, and uh, taking a look at what works. You know, we, we like the saying, when something works, do more of it. Um, interestingly enough, the Chamber's annual meeting works, so we keep talking about how to do more of that. People like the idea of coming together. We had several nice uh, jobs announcements coming out of that meeting. Um, a very good company um, will be coming to um, to your, the area of uh, your listeners, and that was announced uh, uh, during the meeting. And uh, others that were uh, – some of the newer companies were there to talk about their success, the success they're finding in West Virginia. Uh, we met with uh, – uh, we heard from and met with a company called Prime Six, which makes sustainably made fuels. 
Uh, they are moving into, uh, they're a brand new company for West Virginia moving into Buchanan. Um, we heard from Forum Energy, which has, uh, just achieved remarkable success, uh, in the Wheeling area. And, uh, we're very optimistic about West Virginia's ability to attract and retain these kinds of businesses. A few years ago, we were not having this kind of success. We reformed our laws in West Virginia. We modernized our uh, human resource laws. We lowered our business taxes. And um, we have worked on making the regulatory process uh, faster and smoother. And it's paying big dividends. We need, uh, we need another decade of progress to sort of catch up to where we should have been all along. But if we keep going at the rate we've been going, we'll get there. And um, certainly you're seeing that in, in, uh, in your area, the growth that you're having um, throughout the eastern panhandle, but particularly in Berkeley and Jefferson counties, is just astounding. And uh, I've realized it brings certain challenges with it, but um, West Virginia needs the population, and we need, uh, in order to attract population, we've got to have uh, good places for people to work. The, the Prom 6 had an interesting investor. Yes, yes. And my understanding is that he is going to be paying a visit to West Virginia. I met with the founder of that company uh, uh, last week, and um, it's my understanding. I think they're going to want to make the announcement as to when and where, but uh, it's my understanding that uh, their interesting investor will be coming to West Virginia to eyeball us firsthand and uh, make his presence known and that can only be good for us in west virginia is this person we, a mystery um, is, is this person a mystery steve um uh, no the governor talked about him um during his announcement and um so i'm uh i'm good to go with uh if you want to mention who that is um um kevin o'leary from shark tank there you go. So I didn't know if you wanted to say it or I'll you say wanted it. me to say Kevin it. Kevin O'Leary from so, it was on a it was on a video, so oh, very yeah, good. public yeah, video. He, so it was on a it's not a secret, um, and uh, but exactly when and where has not been determined, yet, or gotcha. at least it's not been announced. It may be determined. It hasn't been announced. The governor would like an additional five percent personal income tax cut, and he wants the legislature to discuss it uh, in about a week uh, or in a half here. Uh, yep. Your thoughts on this, Steve, from a Chamber of Commerce perspective, the 4% trigger is a given. Uh, do we do another 5%? You know, so um, at the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, we some years ago identified our personal income tax as an impediment to growth. It, it, uh, we felt it was too high. It's also that, that uh, personal income tax rate is also the rate that many small businesses pay if they are uh, organized as subchapter S companies. So uh, we wanted to see that rate become uh, lower uh, to make West Virginia more competitive. Uh, the first round of reductions has had an impact. The second round of uh, reductions has been announced. We like the uh, path that we're on. Um, but we want to hear everybody out on this. It's my understanding that the legislature is being very open-minded on this and wants to uh, take a deep dive into um, what our current uh, revenue uh, forecast is, what kind of revenues we're experiencing, and then what our needs going into the future will be. So my, my view of this is, um, I, I think most of us, from a public policy point of view, would say if you if you can cut taxes, cut them. If you're over collecting, then um, that's that's not good for the people who are paying them. So let's look and see where we are in terms of the entire revenue picture. Let's look and see where we are in terms of our needs going forward. And um, and let's see if we can afford these tax cuts. You know, we reduced. Let me let me jump in on two quick subjects. Uh, about ten years ago, um, we eliminated our business franchise tax, and it's been a little more than ten years ago. But we eliminated our business franchise tax, and we reduced our corporate net income tax rate. And here's the great thing: we then experienced greater 
revenue coming from businesses than we had um, before we reduced those rates. So the idea of getting rates lower and flatter and more understandable um, makes us more competitive, and we need to be more competitive because we want those jobs coming to West Virginia. Um, And we're excited about the opportunity to at least explore the idea uh, the idea um, is one that, uh, in terms of getting our personal income tax rate down, is one that we've been talking about for a long time. We don't think we can wholesale just uh, uh, sort of clap our hands and eliminate the personal income tax because it accounts for such, such a large share of our state's total revenue picture. But as our state brings in more jobs, as we grow the economy, we should have more opportunities to reduce a lot of taxes. We, by the way, would favor reducing the corporate net income tax rate again. We could do a a relatively um, small dollar reduction in our corporate net income tax rate and be among the top 10 states in the nation um, for the competitiveness and attractiveness of our corporate net income tax. We think that's a rate we could actually lower and um, and then experience more income because more companies would invest and grow here. And clearly, when we have companies investing and grow here and growing here, our economy spreads and grows. Steve, great to have you on the program today. Thank you so much for your time. Good to be with you. Appreciate your time. And uh, we'll all think about Batman as we have this great day. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. See ya. We are back with a final minute after the